In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I like to get all of my mistakes out of the way right at the beginning. So I like, you know, throw a prayer book on the floor and can't find a place, but okay. I, I want to thank the readers for uh, the reading of the first lesson in all the different languages. The, uh, uh, that, was, that was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And I'm going to quote from that. I'm going to quote the uh, very first line. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. Dozens and dozens of times I've read or heard that read from the book of Acts of the Apostles, like we heard this morning. But I miss the enormity of that statement. You know, I often treated it, uh, that one sentence of the second chapter of Acts, kind of as a preface, uh, a stage setting for the st story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that is how I read it. I read it several times in preparation for today's sermon. I read right past that first sentence, hoping to find more inspiring sentences in today's reading. Then all of a sudden, I was inspired to understand what I had read on a Pentecost many centuries ago in an upper room in Jerusalem. The entire church was all together in one place. Not a congregation or a diocese, not a denomination or branch of the Christian church, but the disciples, <coughs> all of the disciples, and the only disciples of Jesus Christ were all together in one place. How many was that? A dozen, 15, 20, the book of Acts does not say. It could not have been too many. It was only one upper room in a house. That small group of people, fired by the Holy Spirit, produced billions and billions of Christians over 21 centuries. St. Joseph's on the mountain, you, you and I here today, are direct descendants of, this, of the disciples in that upper room. I was blessed 18 years ago to be awarded a Lilly Grant for a sabbatical in Europe. I started in Rome, the city where St. Paul died, the city where St. Peter died. And I made a pilgrimage from the Eternal City to Kent in England, following the footsteps of Canterbury's first Archbishop, St. Augustine. My hope during that sabbatical was to understand the spiritual impetus that caused Christians to begin a new thing. I visited old Christian places to understand how new Christian events sprung into being. Every ancient cathedral, monastery, and convent, every one of them was once a new enterprise where now stands a magnificent cathedral in Canterbury, the spiritual center of worldwide Anglicanism, there, once upon a time, stood a small wood and stone monastery built by St. Augustine and 30 monks from Italy. St. Augustine died in 604, 1,500 years ago. It seems so long ago such ancient history. But at one time, at one time, Canterbury was fresh, rugged, missionary territory. Like the disciples at Pentecost, all the Christians in Kent 
could fit in one room the entire Church of England was fewer than the average attendance at an Episcopal Sunday service. A few scared monks. <coughs> yeah, they were scared. They, they tried to go back to Rome early in the journey. They got into Gaul. They got into Gaul somewhere near Caen, and they heard that the, uh, uh, the, the Brits might eat them. And so they refused to go on, and, and St. Augustine left them there in, 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 uh, in Caen and went back to Pope Gregory the Great. And the Pope wrote the monks a letter, a letter of encouragement that they should go on. A few scared monks, less than 30, began worldwide Anglicanism. A few scared disciples began worldwide Christianity. The power of the Holy Spirit made everything possible. The power of the Holy Spirit made up for fear, for inexperience, for ignorance, but for all human weakness. The power of the Holy Spirit is given in grace, and grace makes good works possible. Lots of people, maybe you, maybe you, puzzle over how salvation is implemented. We know that we are saved by grace, but, but aren't we supposed to do something? If all we need for salvation is to believe that Jesus, in Jesus, then why do saints like St. Saint Augustine risk their lives crossing continents for Jesus? People puzzle over salvation by grace or salvation by works. I have an answer to this puzzle, an answer that at least works for me. <clears throat> yes, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But grace through faith, grace through faith is, is like electricity. It's not something it's some action. Electricity is electrons in motion doing some work. Grace is switched on in a special type of work. Grace wants you to take on something, some project that you cannot do. That way, no one gets to brag before God about all the things that they've accomplished. If you have accomplished something, one of two things is true. One, it's no big deal. It's no big deal because you did it, because you were given the time, talent, and opportunity as a gift from God to do it. Or two, what you accomplished is a very big deal, a real big deal. In fact, it is such a big deal that you cannot do it. God, the Holy Spirit, made up for everything you lacked. You were given grace. Let me suggest a classic example of grace and works, works and grace. And the best example I know of grace and works and works and grace is the 12 step program. The 12 step <clears throat> program. Recovery has 12 steps, 12 things to be done, 12 works. And the first step, the first work, the first thing to be done is to admit you are powerless. Great works for your soul begin when you take on something that you cannot do. There is some great work you have not done because you cannot do it, because it's too hard. Well, that is your opportunity for grace. This is how you know God is in your life. Really, really feel the presence the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. 
to do something you cannot do. Maybe it's some personal work that you need to do. To forgive that hurt you've carried for so long, do it because it's impossible for you to forgive that. Or maybe it's some community work. To volunteer to work with the poor, the elderly, the AIDS patient, just because they terrify you. In practicing these words, I, 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 I apologize for speaking from my place as a priest, but I thought about the one Roman Catholic priest in Uvalde. There's nothing that prepared that man to do what he is being asked to do. <coughs> I'm sure the first phone call he got and the many phone calls after that for the funerals that he was supposed to and, and is doing, he said, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. That's where grace is. Teach Sunday school because you don't think you can. Sign up for Bible study because you don't have the time. There's no room for grace in the things that you can do. Okay, let's get personal. This congregation is in transition. You're without a rector. And yet, those pastoral, liturgical, executive ministries that are part of a rector's duty did not go away with Bill. The diocese sends a supply priest to take care of some of the liturgical duties. But the rest falls upon the members of the congregation, including the search for the new rector. You may think that you do not have the time, that it is all too hard, that you do not know what you need to know to help, which is exactly the opportunity that grace needs to work. You need to be open to the work and determine that you will give your best effort. Grace will provide what is necessary to fulfill God's will. I am predicting that there will be, there will be many opportunities for grace this summer. I predict that you will be presented with new ministries, new <clears throat> opportunities for grace. Who knows what the Holy Spirit will do? The Holy Spirit turned St. Augustine and 30 fr frightened monks into the founders of the Church of England and worldwide Anglicanism. The Holy Spirit turned a roomful of timid disciples into evangelists to the world. Great things are in store for a faithful Episcopal Church, for St. Joseph's on the Mount. As for me, I will be watching to see what the Holy Spirit is doing with you. And as I am today, I'll be trying a few new things myself. Amen.